Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our, today is our lesson number 52. Yesterday we started the topic, we, we talked about how to multiply and divide fractions. How to multiply and divide fractions. Today we are going to do a few more examples on the same topic. Let's do the very first example. The very first one we have is 3 and 7 9 times 3 quarter. The question actually was what is the product of 3 and 7 9 and 3 quarter? What's the product of these two numbers? The same as saying that we have to multiply them. Let's do that, shall we? 3 and 7 9 can be written as 3 times 9 plus 7 over 9 plus 3 quarter. 3, three nines are 27. 27 plus 7, 27 plus 7, 27 plus 3 would be 30 and another 4 would be 34. So we end up with 34 over 9 times, I should say times, not add, times 3 quarter. That's it. All we have to do now is to reduce them, simplify them. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. If we divide top and bottom by 2, we cannot divide by 4 because 34 is not divisible by 4. Let's divide top and bottom by 2, the 4 is going to become 2, and 34, 3 has 1, 2, 3 has 1, 2, the remaining 1 goes and joins the 4, becomes 14, and 14 has 7 2's. So we end up with 17, 4, 34 divided by 2 is 17. We see 3 at the top and we see 9 at the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 is going to drop out and 9 is going to become 3, and we end up on the bottom we end up with 3 times 2 which is 6, so we end up with 17 over 6, which is same as... 12 over 6 plus, plus 5 over 6, because 12 over 6 is 2, since 12 over 6 is 2, actually the final answer boils down to 2 and 5, 6. The final answer is 2 and 5, 6. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. The next one says, simplify the expression. Simplify the expression. 7 fourth divided by 5 12. So when they use this fancy language like that, simplify the expression, we still just have to do what, what, what is being told, which is simply we have to divide, the, we have to take the first number first fraction and divided by the second fraction. Now what, what do we do when we, when we have one fraction, when we have one fraction which is being divided by another fraction? Well it's right here, we learned it yesterday. When one fraction is being divided by other fractions, we have to take the first fraction, so first fraction is 7 fourths, we have to take the first fraction and then multiply it, the division sign turns into a multiplication sign, multiply it by the, the upside down, the reciprocal, the inverse of the second fraction. So 5 twelfths is going to become 12 fifths. That's it. We see 12 on the top, we see 4 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 4. We do that, 4 drops out and 12 becomes 3. That's about it. That's all we can do here. Nothing else because they're all prime numbers. 7 times 3 is 21, 21 divided by 5. 7 times 3 is 21 divided by 5, which is same as 20 divided by 5 plus 1 divided by 5. And 20 divided by 5 is 4, so the final answer is 4 and 1 fifth. 4 and 1 fifth is the final answer. Let's continue. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. The next one is asking us to do this part. 7 plus 3 fifths times 10 39. It's not actually a bad idea for, actually, for you to do this problem on your own. Pause the video and do them on your own. You will learn more that way. You will get more out of it that way. The key here is to not worry about the 7 until the very end. Let's keep the 7 in abeyance. Let's keep the 7. Let's keep the 7 in abeyance. Let's worry about this part right now. So 3 fifths times 10 39. 3 fifths times 10 39. I'm going to rewrite it. I, didn't, I don't like it. 3 fifths times 10 39. 
we see 10 at the bottom, or we see 10 on the top, we see 5 at the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 5. 5 drops out and 10 is going to become 2. We see 3 on the top and we see 39 on the bottom. 39 we can clearly see is divisible by 9. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. The 3 is going to drop out. 3 has 1 3 and 9 has 3 3's. That's it. So it's 2 over 13 is, is the answer so far. This part is 2 over 13. So we end up with 7 plus 2 over 13. What do we do next? Nothing. That's it. Don't make a fuss. The answer, answer simply is 7 and 2 13. 7 and 2 13. What does it mean to leave something in abeyance? To keep something in abeyance or to leave something in abeyance means to keep it aside. Keep it aside as in we'll deal with it later. Let's not worry about it right now. We'll deal with it later. We'll come to it later. Let's keep it in abeyance. When did we learn the word abeyance? I know we learned it. I'm looking at my day number 9. Day number 9. Vocab day 9. If you're interested in learning the word, if you're interested in improving, improving your if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, if you're preparing for any of these tests, SAT, SAT, TES, GMAT, JRE, you need to have decent vocabulary. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, you can learn some more words. Just type in okay, whichever test that you're preparing for. For example, SAT vocabulary words or GRE vocabulary, GRE vocabulary words. Day 9, and the video will pop right up where we learn the word abeyance. Let's do the next one, number 4. Number 4. Number 4 is 5 minus 7, 8 divided by 3 quarter. Same exact thing, same exact logic, same exact method, same exact rationale, nothing changes which is to say that we're going to leave the 5, keep, keep 5 in abeyance, keep it in abeyance. Keep it aside, we'll deal with it later. Let's take this part, 7, 8 divided by 3 quarter, so we're going to take the first fraction and multiply it, multiply it by the reciprocal of the second fraction. The reciprocal of the second fraction, 3 quarter is going to become 4 third. Divide top and bottom by 4, the 4 drops out and 8 becomes 2 and we end up with 7 on the top and 2 times 3 at the bottom which is 6. So it's 7, 6. Now 7, 6, 7, 6 is same as, 7, 6 is same as 6, 6 plus 1, 6. And of course 6 over 6 is just 1, it's 1 and 1, 6. 1 and 1, 6. So what's the final thing that we have? The final thing that we have is this. The final thing it boils down to is, the final thing that it boils down to is that we have a 5 here, 5 minus minus this quantity which we just found out is which we just found out is 1 plus 1 6 1 plus 1 6 keep, keep listening see what happens here we're going to keep our life very simple 5 minus 1 5 minus 1 is just 4 so now we have 4 minus a 6 4 minus a 6 4 can be written as 3 plus 6 6 of course, that's what that's what four is. Four is simply four is simply three plus six six because six six is one. So it's three plus one is four minus a six. So we have six six minus one six. That's five six. So the final answer is three. That comes down here, and six six minus a six is going to be five six. It's five six. That's all I have for today. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.